Welcome to the Unearthed Man Podcast, the journey of becoming a conscious man, hosted by Milva. Hey all, Milva here, and welcome to episode 10 of the Unearthed Man Podcast. Woo, here we are, episode 10. Uh, when I first kicked off the Unearthed Man podcast, or even back in January, where I said my one thing was to do a podcast, uh, episode 10 seemed a long way off. So in true style and, and how we actually should do, uh, I'm actually uh, going to go off at the end of this episode and go and celebrate the fact that not only did I set a goal and kick off on the actual podcast, But celebrate the fact of, you know, I've successfully made it through to episode 10. I get that there are people out there who have done hundreds of episodes, but for me, you know, episode 10 is a large milestone. It means I've been consistent, I've met my goal, and I've continued to stick through with this. So I couldn't be super prouder of where I'm at and where the episode has come along, um, and certainly the podcast, and I'm looking forward to future episodes as we move forward. Uh, As you know, I'm generally available on LinkedIn, Instagram, and Facebook. So if you are looking for me, just please reach out to all those people who have listened to all the episodes so far. Thank you very much for being loyal listeners. If this is your first time, hey, I hope you jump in and enjoy the episode. So before I go off and uh, celebrate too much, let's just get on with today's episode. My guest this week is engaged with his beautiful queen, Sersha, and have a young bundle of energy, Fia. Since coming to Australia 12 years ago, he has reinvented himself and changed careers from 19 years in the construction industry to a men's empowerment coach. He's now helping men to get out of their mind and live from their heart. He offers one-on-one coaching and workshops under the banner of Conscious King Coaching. Welcome to the Unearthed Man podcast, Dara Byrne. G'day, Melva. How are you doing? It's good to be here. Man, I'm doing really well. Thanks for uh, dropping in. Um, you were definitely always going to be one of my upfront first lot of guests to have on the podcast. Uh, <laughs> May I ask why? <laughs> well, we, uh, I, I can remember this um, this Irish guy from uh, from Unleash the Beast that we did in November, full of confidence and full of swagger. Uh, love to dance, <laughs> so uh, and I can remember you from back then. And then, yeah, we dropped in. We've done King's Court together, Warriors Way. Uh, they've both been enormous programs. I've watched your your growth. I've been part of this journey for you, you know, over over the last X months, and it's it's just been amazing, man. So yeah, absolutely love to to get you on because you've you've inspired me along the way. Beautiful, Melvo. I. I've had an amazing journey also. I remember you well from Release the Beast, which was in November. That really, really powerful exercise, that really powerful moment we had together where you united the whole room. There was a bit of me involved in that, in you. And to feel that connection to 60 men was powerful. Uh, not a lot men are starting to come out of the shell a lot more now these days. So it's really interesting and it's really powerful and beautiful to be a part of helping to awaken men to this side of life. Yeah, we um, we we touched on that um, that experience uh, with Blaze Grinner in in a previous episode about the uh, yeah, yeah that is for me it's the most super powerful thing to be held up by 60 men and knowing that they had your full support and the love and the non-judgment was there is just it it changed my life Uh, this is why I'm now doing the work and this is why I'm here because you know that that changed my life back then and then continually work with guys like yourself you know Dave Byrne, Blaze Grinner, Glenn Money, Seth Slade you know it's just been awesome this journey that we continue to go on and, and, and how we keep holding each other to account for the lives that we're now choosing to live, which is just amazing. Yeah, it's really, really good. Um, that was a really powerful moment for me in that whole weekend. It, just to show that we are all the same. 
no matter the color, the height, the shape, men, we all have problems. We're all dealing with our own internal issues. What the most powerful moment of that um, exercise was to realize that we all shared that pain. We all had something that we had suppressed and stuffed down. And that was the permission slip to release that. And I think it was beautiful to see you were all obviously up on top, but I was down with, with in the crowd, in the group. And I got to see all the men, including myself. We all shed a tear. We all cried. Each different man had his own experience in that moment of releasing some sort of pain that was trapped in, within. So it was really beautiful to connect with men on such a deep level like that. That was the first time I've ever in such a big group um, connected with, with men in such an emotional environment. So it was really empowering afterwards because it was like that was the pivotal moment in the weekend I feel that was where we all seen each other for who we were yeah. and when we walked into that room at first it's really interesting I've been in these rooms before and I love it like when you walk into the room at first you know people the shoulders are hunched over you know there's a couple of murmurs barely a, a hello and um, you know oh, where you, you know the surface <clears throat> Excuse me, the surface surface level questions. Yeah, yeah. Um, and as the weekend goes on, like uh, people start to get more confident, and and then by the end of the weekend, it's like high fives, hugging and kissing, <laughs> hugging, <laughs> bouncing around, dancing. The music got pumping, like you got your best mate, you're telling him all your shit. Yeah, it's just like the gradual energy of the weekend. Uh, shift the transformation in those moments is, is phenomenal so with that said i feel that was the pivotal turning point in in that weekend i think after that moment is when everyone was like broken open dancing bubbly being all of that high five fucking man all of that jazz so yeah, yeah. Was yeah. really the 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 interesting thing for me is it's uh I don't think I'd cried for 35 years up to that point. And now I don't think I've stopped crying since. So, <laughs> you know, but, but, but that, that permission and that's what happened, you know, like that's what men can do for other men, that, that men can, men can be, we can hold other men back like by our being judgmental by, you know, coming from our minds and, and applying our own beliefs and our own, you know, judgmental system over them, or we can go the other way and we can provide men permission to be who they truly are by coming from our heart space and coming from our hearts and saying, we're just going to give you love and we're going to give you support and we're going to give you com compassion and we're not going to judge you. And if you are going to lie up there and just cry and cry, and that's now giving us permission to also join in in that emotion and let out what's holding for us, then yeah, that that's for me, that's the work that we're now into. And, and that's just what I want to be able to portray to others to say, it's okay to grab a brother and let him cry. Let him stand there, see him, for, see him in all his glory, see, see him in all his emotion. Allow him to have all that emotion come out and cry. And then when he's finished, embrace that man and just say, I've got your brother. I'm here for you and I love you. And let's go on the journey together. And that's awesome, I reckon. Yeah, hundred percent. That is fucking. That is the job right there. Allowing that space without trying to butt in in the moment, because it's really important that the emotion comes through, as opposed to coaching the emotion in the moment. Because in a society where alcohol and drugs and you know suppression and distraction, overworking, you know the things we use to hide our true emotion. When those emotions do come true and the man or woman is willing to go there, 
it's really important to really allow that to come out because it's been stuffed down for so long and it's it's in the emotional process of the release. It might be a scream, it might be a cry, whatever it is, it's really important for all of that to leave the body in that moment. So then it opens up the space to heal from it afterwards. So yeah, ab- absolutely. And um and I know that we've discussed this in, in other occasions, the that connection between emotion and illness and the fact that you know by if we're holding on to that emotion then you know it transpires in in other forms you know in other forms of illness or other forms in just how we're doing our life and you know it's amazing how by freeing up a lot of that emotion and actually letting it out we're actually allowing our body to also be free of you know other potential illnesses that, that you know whether it be we deem it as being stress or anxiety or something else it just helps to to free us up in that space as well mm. it's uh, such a good road isn't it <laughs> so <laughs> let's take a step back man so you know dara Byrne, clearly of irish descent uh lands in australia what's the man <laughs> I, I love it, man. I, I, I'm definitely Irish descent. So I'm the one thing uh, I'm, I'm English Irish and trust me, I'm more proud of the fact I have an Irish <laughs> background than I do on my English background. So don't get that wrong. man. <laughs> I, I, I thought that was going to be the case. My, uh, my uncle who passed away a couple of years ago now, name is Patrick Goonan. So, uh, oh, and he is basically, uh, five, he was five foot and he was your Irish garden gnome without a problem at all. <laughs> <laughs> Just so, smiling all day. How yeah, yeah. rosy red cheeks. Yeah, absolutely. He was such a beautiful man, but, uh, yeah. And, and there's a man who had, uh, had definitely a past that he worked through. So yeah. So talk me through yourself, your journey to Australia. And then, you know, you've had 19 years in construction. You've now, deciding you know you now made the, the, the beautiful courageous move to to say this is my now role in life as a coach and just talk me through what that looks like for you and, and some of the emotion that's come up with you on that way you know on that path um for me thank you for asking that question when i initially came to australia on holiday in 2008 um completely unknown to me because my friends were here and I just took the jump, came on the holiday and here I am. Like I, I some people didn't real didn't believe I would last more than three months. And I'm here it's twelve years now. So I've learned a lot about myself in that process. Um I learned, you know, living away from home, in and out of jobs in the big man's world, isn't it, really? And I had a huge party lifestyle from where I grew up. I grew up in a really rough part of Dublin. Um, really rough and, you know, men are men. Like, and there was, a, there was a lot of police around and there was a lot of trouble around the neighbourhood all the time, so... As life progressed and partying on the session all the time, this one particular Christmas, uh, I had an ex-girl at the time, girlfriend at the time, I call it, and she was, she was going to be moving home. My best mate was leaving, and I was constantly, I, was on, I had a big session, and I was like, I felt alone. Yeah. Whenever I called home, everybody it was Christmas time. Everybody was like having a great time, and I was shit scared. I felt alone, and I was afraid to tell anybody about it. Okay. Um, and the more I called home, and I was asking questions, probing questions, the more lost I felt because I knew I was feeling this really gut-wrenching, powerful emotion. And I, I was afraid to express it because I didn't want to hurt the, my family's feelings, the other people's feelings I was speaking to. So I suppressed it and that 
came to a boiling point within myself where I considered suicide. Oh, wow. Mm. So I was like, I, I wasn't necessarily, so what the thought that came up was everybody's doing great. They, w- they won't even miss me. They wouldn't even miss me if I was gone. So immediately recognizing that, I was like, what the fuck? Where did that come from? And by the time I even thought about where that came from, I'd already thought another million thoughts. Um, so then I was in that massive whirlwind with my, with my own mind. Uh, you know, you, you shouldn't be thinking that. And then the more I tried to stop thinking it, the more it snowballed yep, and yep. created a bigger, the monkey mind got to work and created a bigger vortex, a bigger black hole. And yeah, I was just sort of struggling to find a way out. And that was with me for almost almost two weeks. And um, just felt like the weight of the world was on my shoulders. And anywhere I went, felt like it was depression and despair. Yep. Although I was living in Melbourne, um, 40 degrees, I lived by the beach. It was like, you know, the dream life, the people that look at it from the outside in. Yes. Um, and it was in that moment that I knew I needed help. I was in, I'd had enough, I needed help. And the guy that I reached out to was actually the guy I was on the first podcast with. Um, yeah, he told me about the book, The Secret. And I went and got that book and it was true reading that book. It's a lot of snippets from different, um, you know, thought leaders throughout history. Uh, I had, it brought me back to my awareness of myself and the things that I have been through throughout my life and it re-energized me and a, a lot of memories flooded back and it brought that life back into me, that belief. I, I began to see a pattern of how these people won in their life and attach that to goals and dreams that I had achieved in my life. So it brought me back to the realization that I am actually powerful and yeah. I can mm-hmm. achieve things once I put my mind to them. So it, put, it brought that light bulb back into my life. It was a really powerful moment. Uh, and that's a, uh... Yeah, that's super awesome. That's, uh, you know, one, thank you for sharing that because that that's, yeah, a really deep story and, and I appreciate that. So in, in relation to that, your know, rediscovery of you, your self-worth and, and your power, how long ago was that and, you know, what's happened since then and, and you know, what steps are you now taking or that you've taken on post then? Um, that was... It was about eight years ago. It's about eight years ago. And since then, I have been sharing my wisdom with people, just just like coaching one-on-one, just in person. Even before I knew what coaching was, um, I went and bought that book for a bunch of people I knew that were struggling with mental health issues and self, um, you know, self-doubt and self-love, limiting beliefs. And I just gradually um, kept leaning in and working on myself, doing workshops. um, And the more I lent in, the more more wisdom I generated and the more I realized how, how much of a gift that I had that I could share this with I could. I had a powerful story that I could share with pe- with men in particular to show them that there's another way, um, because the the suicide like suicide is a, a huge part. It's a huge part of society that I believe we can severely limit as long as we can uh, help people to to, you know, get out of their mind and open their mouth. Um, and the biggest recognition for me was where I come from is super rough. 
um, you know, there's a lot of proper, proper blading head cases around yeah, the place. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I grew up with them, and I was I was there. I was involved in fucking lots of mischief growing up, and um, and I, I've wit- not witnessed, but I've been around a lot of suicide growing up also. So I want to speak out to show people from where I live. First of all, I grew up with you. I am one of you. We are all the fucking same, and. For me to take this message back here to show that we can all do it. Like there's another way. We don't have to go down the road of, you know, suffering in silence, which leads to as horrible as it sounds. In the end, it leads to suicide for some people that believe that that's the only way. So, for me to bring that back to my home, to my People is really powerful for me because they know me. They know me most. I grew up with everybody there, and for me to share this is for, like this is. And now from me living this, I'm now given from the overflow. So I've set myself up as a one-on-one coach. I've changed. I've been in, in the construction industry for 19 years. I started in apprentice plumber when yep. I was 15 and um, I'm now 34 almost 35 um, and it's just a show I, I'm, I've I've got myself out I've helped many many people to get out of their own mind into their heart to teach them the tools to choose differently and empower them with the tools so they don't need me to hold a hand every day. Yep. Yep. Um, men in my life that are doing their own thing now. Sometimes I speak to them, sometimes I don't. But they're equipped with the tools to navigate whatever the fuck life throws at them this day. So it's really, really exciting. Right now, I, my, my partner wants to go away for the weekend. <laughs> <laughs> my wedding was supposed to be next. Our wedding was supposed to be next weekend. And now today she wants to go to a friend's house and stay the night you know and all i want to do is work <laughs> <laughs> so it's like oh, that's a conversation i am not have to lean in with right now crystal clear communication and um, i i love and i want to go and spend the weekend with our friends but i've got a purpose here now and i want to solidify my foundation so I can help men moving forward so being in that it's really relevant because it's real for me right now when she comes home it's a conversation I want to I'm going to have as much as she doesn't want me to be here working instead of huffing and puffing I'm going out of um, you know anger or I don't want to be here and uh, keeping it in my mind and my ego Yep. And then having a horrible time while I'm over there, um, I'm going to bring that into the space and with crystal clear communication and come to an agreement with my queen and see where we go from here. Yeah, man, that's uh, – and I think you've touched on – that. there's probably a few things you've touched on all the way through there, which is um, so some powerful stuff. My my experience, uh, personal experience in relation to suicide is my daughter at the age of 15 attempted suicide. And, yeah, that's pretty pretty tough to go through. Uh, well, for her, absolutely tough to go through. But, you know, to, to find out that, that that's what actually took place, um, she, she went down to a train station and just basically was about to step off in front of a train and a man held her arm and said, don't do that. Um, we didn't even know that she'd left the house and had gone down to the train station. Uh, we found out about it because um, after that, she actually came into her bedroom after seriously cutting herself with a knife deliberately. Um, so yeah, spent 24 hours with her in hospital then as she worked through it. And, and I remember there's the emotions that go with that. Uh, you know, for me, there's two things. One was every morning when I got up, 
the first thing I would actually do is is go and quietly open her bedroom door and look to see if she was breathing. And if she was breathing, today was a good day. That that's that's how deep you end up coming back to. So all these other things that we talk about for you know life and the materialistic items and all these other things that go on around us when something that happens in your life and, and, and the first thing that you want to do every day is to open up your daughter's bedroom door and go, is she still alive today? And if she is today, just has to be another great day because I get to spend another day with her. You know, it really grounds you back into to where you are. And so that was, yeah, a super challenging experience. And then as a man, not sharing out all my emotions around that, um, holding all that in, not even telling my partner my wife that that's what I was doing not even telling my daughter that's what I was doing you know so when you can constantly hold that in and you start to think about are you a failure as a man are you a failure as a dad you know what have you done wrong you know and, and everything else and you know what I love about it now is is you know even yesterday myself and my daughter caught up and, and we're now talking about a whole lot of things about you know what was the emotional state I was in when she was born you know, don't tell me about everything was okay. Like, where were you at emotionally? Where were you at in your life at that point of time? So that we can now go through and, and rebuild back all of these conversations and all of these uh, deep level emotions about what's taking place so we can both go on a healing journey together. What doesn't happen, you know, so that's a male-female connection, but what, what I don't see happening, and, and you've alluded to it, we're not doing that with guys. Like men are just not opening up that space. They're just not sitting down talking about that burden, you know, that we're carrying. I, I know the one of the things that that we would deal with, Dara, that you know, we talk through it's you know, it's not the size of the load that you carry, it's actually how you go about carrying that load. And that's a, a pretty key thing that we, we often forget. And if we're carrying it wrong or we're carrying it deeply, then it uh, it becomes a super powerful um you know it it can be very dangerous to us if if that's what we're actually doing. So the yeah. other thing, so the other thing that you've uh, you, you've touched on, man, which I think you know in witnessing your journey is you know this transition to you now being this you know amazing one on one coach. Uh, you know I think you've got currently running you know a number of at least six clients, if not more, um, you know, that you, you've got out there that you're actually working with. Uh, I see all the messages that, you know, come back when you do your videos, the messaging that's coming out of, you know, native Island the, of, of all that connections that you've got back there. And I just see the empowerment that you are actually giving back to, you know, um, your home countrymen, but even the countrymen here in Australia and, and all the people around that you deal with. Um, so the coaching journey, let's, let's talk through that and, and where you're at and, again, why, why you see that as being super important and you know, why you feel men should actually be starting to step into this space and asking for help. That's a beautiful question, Milho, and I will bring you back to the, where you left off with your daughter and the fact that, you know, you didn't express that for many years. Um, and then move forward to your your question just before us. The importance of coaching in this day and age is to help probe those emotions out of other men and um, to show that it's not weak. It's not a weakness to show that emotion um, and to help guide that because when we hold emotions especially a traumatic event so deep like that for so long and um, it's a powder keg it's a powder keg waiting to explode and also people are unaware like for instance those traumatic experiences control our subconscious mind and People are unaware of how that how that affects them moving forward, especially when they don't realise they've they've suppressed it for so long. Um, and I'll give an example of this. Have you ever, in a split second, you know, been triggered so badly that 
you've reacted and shouted and had an argument with somebody instantly. Oh fuck yes. And then <laughs> and, <laughs> and, and then like stop stop shouting and then thought to yourself, what the, what what just happened? Yeah, man, that, that, look, that was me, you know, pre us getting together unleashed. That was part of the reason why I went and did it. You know, uh, <laughs> I, I, but, you know again, that was the challenge I had with my daughter. Like, yes, yeah, so the morning I would do stuff, but there was stuff that she was just doing. And, you know, yeah, the, the fucking, <laughs> that, what the fuck, you know, and you just, yeah, it's just, you're going, where the hell did that come from? And I never understood that until I started to really dig deep now into what we're actually doing. It, it, you're spot on, man. So that's um, that's that powder keg. Um, a lot of people, men, they don't realise that we we don't realise that they, there's there's all traumatic experiences. Our little boy, our inner child, that is lashing out through the adult self, and the adult self is unconsciously aware of unconscious to what's going on. So. That right there is the is the inner the wounded child lashing out, um, and then you're the conscious one that's after it's all said and the shouting is done, saying, "What what the fuck just happened? How did I get from love to fucking one hundred and <laughs> ready to burst somebody in like a second? Yeah, 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 uh, yeah, and it. it, it I noticed that I recognise that one night in the club with with Cersei and um, a guy that I thought that, that he tried to kiss her in my mind. So I was um, speaking to our friend to the side, and I was literally like speaking about marriage, weddings, babies, how much I loved Cersei. And I thought this go. I thought they connected, and he tried to kiss her, and and with like bang, I wanted to kill that guy, you know. Yeah, yeah. And I went out. I was, and they were like two steps away from me. They weren't even far away from me, and they were in a group conversation. And I wanted to kill him. I went over. I told him. I, told, I went ballistic, and I left the club because I was afraid of what I was going to do. I, I thank fuck I left the club. So I ran off and and then the next day when we talked through it, it was like, a, I fucking trust you with all my heart and I don't understand why, why this happened, why this is happening. And through getting into this journey that I helped uncover that that was from a past uh, trauma that was replaying in my life. So, yeah, it's... It's interesting to understand when you when you can figure it out, and where the coach comes in is to help probe those, figure it out, so you can release in a safe environment, so as you're not lashing out and hurting those you love. Yeah, yeah, and, and you spot on, man. Which is to me that is the fundamental of you know what the brand I'm operating under, being the unearthed man, is all about. It's actually constantly yourself digging deep like digging and unearthing where are all those little traumas still hiding where are those things you haven't dealt with in your past you know where they're, they're there somewhere and, and you know at some point they're going to pop up can you find them can you deal with them and can you release them in a conscious graceful manner as opposed to at some point in time because you didn't deal with it them coming up in an unconscious <laughs> Fucking ungraceful, like you know, verbal. Fuck yeah, uh, yeah, that's right. Yeah, it's huge matter, and um, yeah, and then being able to help other men also go through and, and understand and feel that they can actually also develop that out. So, yeah, definitely, that's uh, that that's what it's all about. Um, so a couple of things I think we we might look to to close this up because I, I know that uh, your time is definitely precious, and I know that uh, your your lovely. 2B bride will be wanting to uh, take you away on that weekend uh, <laughs> journey. So drop in about your coaching. So Conscious King Coaching, give us a bit about that and a message that you would like to give out to men in relation to 
you know, if they're just feeling lost or just feeling not sure what the next step is, you know, where, what do you think the next steps for that, those men could be? Um, so first of all, my name is Dara B3. Um, I need to change that. Uh, Conscious King Coaching. My name is Dara Bourne on Facebook. Uh, and if you follow Milvo and the Unearth Man, I think there'll be a link in there or a comment underneath uh, this podcast. Put my handle in there. And then from then, um, <clears throat> moving forward, the message I would give is to... It's the first step is the hardest. <clears throat> the first step is the hardest, and the house of cards collapse after that. So, whatever might be troubling you right now, whatever's bubbling up under the surface, and whatever this conversation has made you aware of within your body right now. Find the person you love the most and express that. Or find a stranger and express it. Lean in the importance of opening your mouth and speaking your truth may save your life. And I urge and encourage and love if each and every man would do the same. Just share where you're really at and the the best, what I find, the best way to garner the courage to do that is speak to someone close and then reach into a group setting or one-on-one -on -one coaching that will help plot you along that way. Awesome. Th thanks, Dara. Um, so I definitely would recommend anyone if need be, you know, reach out to myself or reach out to Dara, uh, help dealt with Dara now for a long period of time. And, and, you know, he's just an awesome human being and he's doing awesome stuff with other men. And, and if you don't actually believe me and you don't want my testimonial, go back and find Dara's 72 hour water fast video he done because the <laughs> notorious one, Conor McGregor, He's also <laughs> testimonial and recommending this man, Dara Byrne, to jump on board. So <laughs> I don't think I'm good enough. Then certainly Conor McGregor is the man and, and he would have Dara jumping into his, uh, into his camp any day of the week. So Dara. Um, <laughs> it's, it's been, oh, I love it. It's been awesome chatting to you, man. I look, I love being on this journey with you. We've had some huge laughs um, on some of our weekly calls. It's just been fantastic. Is and that the one where you uh, you dropped your, your naked ass into the camera on Marco Polo? <laughs> <laughs> that, that may have been some things like that. You know, th th this body has to be waxed every now and then, man. It, it, uh, it's my temple. I, 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 it just dropped. I should... My apologies. I haven't addressed you by a real title. <laughs> Elbow the sex god. <laughs> 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 yes, uh, Melo, my deepest apologies to Sex God. I've been looking for tips, man. I'm looking for some more tips. <laughs> so, so if anybody wants to know on an episode about how your ego could overrule what's going on in your life, then uh, name yourself the Sex God. And see the rash that goes on around you. But, uh, yeah, um, that, that was actually at the, at the start of King's Cards, wasn't it? <laughs> it was yeah so we, we started yeah. out and uh, i remember the, just, just to not dob anyone in and i know we're going to close but we'll continue on there's a few guys who were young and single and they were uh trying their best to go out there and find their next partner in life and, and i think one guy <laughs> came back and was proud of the fact that he'd spent you know a couple of nights he'd had a couple of dates and all they're all doing is a couple of dates mate I've had sex three nights in a row. I'm going for number four. I'm the sex guy. Come and chat to me. <laughs> <laughs> oh, such yeah. an interesting transition. So, uh, and to be honest, yeah, I would never have those conversations or been in that joker space or mucked around. So, yeah, it's absolutely awesome. And, and this is what happens. We, we, when you get around with men, you actually have the proper fun, not the drugs, not the alcohol, 
you know, not the harmful stuff. You actually get to just be playful, tap back in. I've spoken a bit about that. Sometimes the inner traumatic child, but there's that beautiful inner playful child that just wants to have fun and just just be and, and, and do some really cool stuff. And, and that's what we're doing. So, Yeah, it's really interesting. Um, I just had a little a light bulb moment in that. Uh, within which shows the power of the work we're doing and creating it's uh, for some people it uh, sounds like woo woo and that's a level of perception it's when you get in the door you realize it's far from fucking woo woo you know um and the realization i had from that moment six months ago you know milvo the sex god like ego you know and here we are on the Unearth Man podcast, you know. So <laughs> this, that in itself is proof of your evolution of, uh, you know, within the man's work, you know. And living in a, a much more heart-centered place now, it's like, it's really fucking interesting and cool to recognize. Yeah, I, I think that's along the way. There's that difference between being self-degrading and actually being self-effacing. Self-degrading is when you're putting yourself down. Self-effacing is just having fun and taking the piss out and, and just enjoying some life. And you know, every now and then we, we take ourselves too seriously and uh, I think it's good to have a bit of fun with it. So, And I know Darabee, the man, he's, uh, he's kept us the comedy running all the way through. Uh, all our video <laughs> chats and everything always start with a very upbeat, happy, laughing smile and, uh, and we've loved it the way through. So again, man, thank you for, for dropping in on the podcast. This has been an awesome chat. I, I've really enjoyed it and uh, you take care and good luck with uh, Conscious King Coaching, man. Thank you very much, Milbo. Um, I really enjoyed it. Had lots of fun and good luck with your podcast there. The men of Melbourne and the world are really blessed to get your expertise. So I look forward to the next one. This is my first. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, definitely be back on again. All right, cheers, man. You take care, and we'll uh, we'll chat soon. Beautiful. That was episode ten of the Unearth Man podcast. Thanks for listening. And as I said at the start. I'm off to have a big celebration now to celebrate the fact that we've knocked off 10 episodes and I'm certainly looking forward to the next 10. So from me, the Unearthed Man, I'm sending you much love and care. Chill out, take care, much peace, much love. Ciao.